Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for being here. I know it's been a long day, so I'll try to wrap this up very quickly. Um, Mr. Menzies, you've been very busy. I know you, you testified before the Climate Change Committee yesterday and appreciate your, your efforts in doing that. And yesterday we had the opportunity to discuss um, the, the proposed SEP plan that um, is, is in the reconciliation bill. And I know that you had some strong feelings on it, as, I, as do I. And, it, it, and I think you would agree that it would be detrimental to investments in other energy solutions if it were to pass. And it would, it, it would essentially just negate a lot of all the progress that we've made I'm from the state of Georgia, of course, and we take um, renewable energy and clean energy very seriously. In fact, solar energy has been growing in our state, and we're in the top 10 now, expect to be in the top seven in the use of solar energy. We're, we have nuclear reactors under construction at Plant Vogel, as you're well aware, the only nuclear reactors under construction in the country right now. It's, it's baseline um, reliable energy, and over time it will be affordable energy, and that's cert certainly something that's important. Just wanted to ask you, um, I know that you mentioned in your testimony about Denmark and their successful acceptance uh, and, and the ad adoption of um, wind energy because they had local buy-in and local ownership. Considering this, what role do you think that states and local communities should have in deciding offshore wind projects in their areas? And I mention this because I have the honor and privilege of representing the entire coast of Georgia. And they are, of course, opposed, I say, there are some who are opposed to offshore drilling, but also to offshore wind projects. And my question is simple. What, what do you think the, the local community, should they have a voice in this or should they not? Thank you for the question. I think we all agree here that the state should have a role. And, and so, you know, the local municipalities, et cetera, nobody is trying to deny anybody from a process. What I think we're f seeing, though, like in Maine, just take Maine. Maine's very supportive. The governor is very supportive. And, but they're banning in-state water. So that's three miles out, I think, is what Maine is. So that pushes everything out in federal waters. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. That takes the state's immunities out, except municipalities, except when you need to come on shore. So we have to figure out a way where somewhere along the eastern seaboard, we're going to have to just physically bring the, the power in. So there'll probably be another round there that might more involve the reliability councils, uh, you know, the utilities, um, you know, the public utility commissioners to make sure that the, the, the bulk power system can handle this fairly enormous amount of power that's going to come in. And so there you're going to have another probably round of stakeholders to go through to see where you can interconnect, who bears those costs, uh, who, who does upgrades, you know, that kind of, those kinds of issues that we were talking can about. Can you elaborate on that? I'm not sure I'm following you. It, you mean that you would put it all together outside the three mile? No, so, so uh, the way that you place the turbines, you know, they can't really all be bunched up. Of course, it's a huge coast, so in some respects, they'll be close together, but even as our NREL lab shows, you position them in certain positions to make sure that you take advantage of, you know, the wind uh, in certain distances. My point on that is, as I had said earlier, you're not going to have a line going into the coast from every single turbine. Right. You're going to have, like, these gathering systems, sort of like we do right now, you know, with natural gas. And so uh, all this electricity will be brought in, and they're going to be into either um, HD, uh, you know, um, you know, high voltage lines, rather, or maybe not quite that much. But the fact is, they got to make landfall, and they got to tie into the bulk power system. So right now, we have interconnections that where other power right now is feeding into the grid. So I think what we've talked about this morning was you identify those places along the bulk power system where you can interconnect. And when that decision is made, then you have the gathering systems, you know, the, the gathering lines, you know, that bring the power in, and, and uh, you know, and then you, you need to bring it on shore. You need to get it into the bulk power system. And that's where FERC and that's where BOEM and the others that we have come in. So you've pushed it further out into federal waters. So it takes it out of the state's hands. And it becomes more expensive as well. Uh, one, would, one would probably, and that would be my, my view, likely, because you're not as close. So, right. You know, you're just further out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, you know, it is a concern. I mean, everybody wants renewable and clean energy, but they just don't want wind turbines in, in sight. You know what, you raise a great case. point about the SEP, because we've been asked about the 10-year program. You right. know, if the SEP passes, the Clean Electricity Performance Project, it pushes 
the utilities from really investing in offshore wind. They're not going to have the time to comply with the SEP to really do the investments and to make the modifications on the grid necessary to bring in offshore wind. It's going to be outside the SEP window. So this is an example of technology that if that SEP is adopted in the reconciliation package, uh, you're not going to get a lot of support when, electric, when uh, the utilities are going to be building solar. That's really all they're really going to, there's going to be some wind, but it won't be offshore wind. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm out of time, and I'll yield back. Thank you very much. Thank all of you.